Hello guys, you're welcome back to our class today. In this particular class, we are going to be bringing you the 2023 Physics WIEC Mock Practical for Mechanics. And in this unique experiment, we are given a helical spring, as you can see here, and then a metal rule, a knife edge, 20 gram mass sealed and labeled Q, 100 gram mass sealed and labeled P, and other sets of masses as will be provided by the teacher and also asked by the question. And then this is a stop clock. Of course, all this setup is connected to a retort stand. So you can see we were told a retort, a retort stand setup. So now here is how the setup is like. You can see the complete setup here. Ensure that your meter rule is balanced horizontally in order to avoid error in the practicals. Now, the question that will be coming for you will come with different positions for this as deemed fit by the examiner. But for this mock practice, I am hanging the spring um, the meter rule on the spring balance at point 90. Here is 90 cm, as you can see it here. And then I have the 100 gram mass here and at the 50 gram mass, which for me is the center of gravity of the meter room. Of course, I told you that the question can come with these positions or the positions for these particular masses. And then the mass labeled Q, I choose to hang it at the 30 cm mark, but you have to pay attention to the structure to know where you will hang yours. And then the knife edge is balanced at the 5 cm mark, as you can see, at this point now no, take note that this is a mock practice so it is not that um, this is what your question will be like you would have to pay attention to what the instruction says of course the a setup is pretty much going to be like this but the position of all of this can vary dependent on the examiner so we are going to continue with the experiment by finding the time it will take for a vertical oscillation of this meter rule. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to simply oscillate this meter rule by just giving it a small amplitude and allow it to vibrate vertically as you are seeing here and then take the time for 20 oscillations. It is important that you take this time twice in order to find the mean, in order to avoid experimental error. So we are going to proceed now to find the time for this particular experiment for this particular vibration so here i have my stop clock set at zero and then i'm going to give a small amplitude ensure always ensure that this is balanced at that particular fixed point if not your record or your your answer will be affected so i have it at five now so i can proceed so here a small amplitude given allow it to settle and then you can we can start taking our reading so let us now proceed so let's go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty this is eight point nine zero so
So here is a total of 70 gram mass hung. Um, we are going to also find the time. So this is what we have. Give it a small displacement and then we can actually find the time. So let's go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. This is 9.06. Let's see what we get. So this is 70 grams. Let us see what it will give us. Give it a small displacement and then we can actually do take our reading. So let's go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So this is 9.18, 9.06 for this. So here is the 80 gram mass. I've added 60 grams now, making it a total of 80. So let us see what we will get at that point. So here we have our stop clock back to zero. So let us see what we get. More amplitude. So let us find the time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So this is 9.21. I will stop it. I will record and then we'll start again. So let's go for the second time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 9.12, 9.21. So I've added 10 more grams, making it a total of um, 70 added and a complete total of 90 altogether. So I will confirm my meter rule to be hung, to be balanced at 5 cm. And then my stop clock back to zero so this is what i have displaced so i can now start taking my readings one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty now this is zero nine point three four i'm going to repeat it again and find out the average so i will displace it and i'll take my time back to zero let's go again one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty so this is nine point two eight nine point three four nine point two eight so here is the last one i've added 80 grams altogether, making it a total of 100 grams and then i have here the pivot at 5 cm and then i'll set my time to zero give it a small amplitude and then we'll go for the last set so let's see what we'll get one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty this is nine point three seven let's go again here and then give it another displacement so let's see what would happen so i take my time back to zero let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty nine point two eight nine point three seven so let us re so let us tabulate our readings and then plot the graph there are still many theories coming on this and then we'll show you that as well thank you so this is how the table looks like you can see on our table here m first time recorded second time recorded and then the mean of the time also recorded then from there we calculated the period remember that the practicals that we did 20 oscillations so finding the period we just divide the time by the number of oscillations to get the period and then we find t square all of these values are all tabulated on the table you are seeing here remember that there may be slight differences from what you're seeing here during the day of your experiment so it depends on how the masses and then the position so don't expect it to be exactly the same way you are seeing it here so with this table now we are expected to plot a graph of t squared against m after this i'm going to show you why it is so now 
a graph of t squared against m would give you a straight line graph of course that is positive so here is what our graph looks like it's a positive graph making an intercept with the vertical axis you can see how it is now to find the slope we just find the difference between the change in t squared over change in the mass and everything will give us 0 0.00025 seconds squared per grams and then if you in case they ask you for the intercept then you can also note that the intercept on the vertical axis is 0 0.192 all right so what is the theory behind this experiment of course the general formula that is in control of this particular experiment is t period is equal to 2 pi square root of m over k where m is mass and k is this, the force constant or the stiffness constant of the spring so if we expand this further we'll get that t squared is equal to 4 pi squared over k times m and if we compare this with the equation of a straight line graph y is equal to mx plus c it means that our slope is equivalent to 4 pi squared over k and from there they may ask you to find the value of the stiff or the force constant of your spring so once you have deduced your slope using 4 pi over k making k subject formula you can actually do find the force constant of your spring for mine i'm having about 158,040.82 newton per meter so this is just about this theory for the precautions they can ask you of course for two precautions of course you know that if there is drought or wind effect this experiment will not be well taken care of so you would avoid every form of drought avoid zero error in reading your stop clock make sure that the amplitude is small to avoid um, um, the experiment being erratic and any other um, precaution that is necessary for you to achieve um, accurate result however there are so many other sub questions that could be asked ranging from elastic properties properties of solid simple harmonic motion and um, equilibrium of solids so all these questions can come around these areas so I'd advise you to just quickly go study these areas and get prepared of uh, for any short answer question of course you know they always bring out two short answer questions for you so that you would be prepared for it but yes yes just a breakdown of some of the questions that they can ask you um, to answer number one state Hooke's law now Hooke's law states that provided that the elastic limit of an elastic material is not exceeded that the extension produced is directly proportional to the applied force so this is one of the questions they may, they may decide to bring i'm not saying it is compulsory but it's good that you know this um in case it comes out apart from that they could also ask you to state the condition for equilibrium of a body which is acted upon by a number of coplanar parallel forces the condition is simple and it is that the algebraic sum of all the forces must be zero and the algebraic sum of the moment due to all forces about any point must also be zero all right don't just write force and moment you may not get your complete mark you, you must state that both the algebraic force and the moment must be equal to zero they can also say explain what is meant by the center of gravity of a body of course you know that center of a gravity of a body is a theoretical point in the body where the body's total weight is thought to be concentrated or acts through so they can also ask you to state the principle of moments. The principle of moments states that when a body is balanced, the total clockwise moment about a point equals the total anti-clockwise moment about the same point, which can be re 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 represented as force times distance. Also, they can ask you to state the condition for a meter <coughs> suspended at two points to be in horizontal equilibrium for this to occur you should note that the net force acting upon that object must be zero now in some other questions they can bring up calculation questions one of those can be to calculate an elastic wire um, extends by 
1 cm when the load of 20 grams hangs on it, what additional load will be required to cause a further extension of 2 cm? So you can see the breakdown here that the additional force is actually 40 grams. You can see the breakdown as it is here. Now having done this, explain acceleration of free fall due to gravity. Now this acceleration due to free fall is the acceleration produced when a body falls under the influence of gravitational force of the earth alone. So we we'll usually donate, uh, denote this by G and its value is 9.8 meter per second per second. So what is meant by the period of oscillation of an oscillating body? The period of oscillation of, of an oscillating body is the time taken for the body to make one complete to and fro movement. And then we have explain how the position of the center of gravity of your body affects the equilibrium of the body. Now, when an object is in stable equilibrium, of course, we have three types of equilibrium in terms of instability. One, stable equilibrium. If you tilt it, you raise the height of its center of gravity. If it is unstable and it is tilted, its center of gravity lowers in height. And if it is, on, if it is neutral, and it is tilted, each center of gravity will remain at the same height. So that is the answer for this question. And then we have state the condition under which a rigid body at rest remains in equilibrium when acted upon by three non-parallel coplanar forces. The condition under which a rigid body remains in equilibrium when acted by three non-parallel coplanar forces are the forces must be concur concurrent, that is, they must meet at a point. That, that implies that the resultant of all the forces must be equal to zero. And then we also have a diagram like this. You can see this diagram almost looks like what this experiment looks like. They can ask you to find the value of W from this particular diagram. Using the principle of moment, you know that the clockwise turning moment is equal to the anti-clockwise turning moment. And then by the time you take your readings um, for the clockwise and anti-clockwise and then um, make W subject formula, you will get your answer to be equal to 10 Newton. And then finally, for now, a body of mass 20 gram is suspended from the end of a spiral spring whose force constant is 0 0.4 Newton per meter. The body is set into simple harmonic motion with amplitude 0 0.2 meters. Calculate the period of the motion. So using the formula that I've already mentioned earlier, T is equal to 2 pi square root of M over K, substituting the values after conversion, then we'll get our answer to be 1.41 seconds. So these and many more, don't, don't be limited by um, these questions alone. There are other questions that could be asked but I'm just giving you this sample to provide a framework for you to work with, right? And then um, I'm so sure that they are going to be of, of immense help to your success. Thank you very much, and I believe that this will be of help to you. Stay tuned for other practicals following through. God bless you.